we live. Go. Congressman Culberson, good to see you again. Andrew, good to be with you. Yeah. So uh, these these new this proposal, uh, I hear will proposal not there's not even a rule circulated, is there? There's nothing being mm -hmm. concrete. It's just letters going back and forth. That's right? true. The House Administration Committee is considering a rule that they can adopt by a simple majority vote in committee that would uh, limit the ability of members of Congress to post on outside blogs, websites, whether it be video or text. What the Administration Committee is trying to do, Andrew, is for the first time regulate the Internet and mm. limit the access to using the Internet. The rule would require your website, Andrew, to be certified and approved by House Franking Committee before I could do this quick interview or before I could post on your blog. And uh, I would have to uh, also have the content, I'd have to have a disclaimer. First, your website would have to be approved. Secondly, I'd have to put a disclaimer on my post or my quick video that it is an official federal communication from a federal office for official purposes. And then finally, the content of my post or my blog or my text or video would be subject to prior approval by the House Franking Committee. So, Franking Committee, that brings up an interesting question. What does franking, uh, using government resources, you know, free mail, have to do with a service that you're paying for, and you, know, you that's I'm assuming that you're using, for instance, uh, your your campaigns, uh, BlackBerry for your Twittering, and your own personal phone for your videos. Mm -hmm. it, what government resources are being expended right. that they would have to exercise oversight to? Actually, I'm communicating in my official capacity as congressman over a Nokia phone that belongs to my office because it is a uh, I have to keep the two worlds completely right. separate. I, uh, one of the few television shows I really love and watch are Seinfeld and Raymond. And you, have to, you remember on Seinfeld, yeah. George brought the girlfriend to right. the apartment once. And we talked. Wild, you know, the two worlds hit well, the boom. We talked about that before. Yeah, yeah. I got to keep the two worlds separate. So I have a Nokia phone for the campaign, and I have a Nokia phone for the office, and those are right. both linked to my quick website. But and I can use I use the official phone, for example, today. Andrew will be voting within the next 15 to 30 minutes. And I'm going to take my official Nokia phone to the House floor. I'm going to find Mike Capuano, who's the chairman of House Franking, who's a nice guy. We're good friends. And I'm going to talk to him about this and say, listen, Mike, you have about as much chance of regulating the Internet as King Canute did of stopping the tide. And you remember King Canute was the Viking king. Who didn't go was, very well. Didn't work very well. Uh, king Canute thought he was so powerful, he ordered his men to carry him and his throne out onto the beach into the tide, and he ordered the tide to stop. And they're going to have about as much luck regulating the Internet as King Canute did stopping the tide. So I'm going to point that out to Mike in a friendly way, nonpartisan, and suggest that they really need to back off of this rule and simply allow members to use good judgment. And obviously I'm not going to go to a, uh, using official resources, go to a website and say, vote for me. I mean, that's... That's idiotic. against the law. It's idiotic. I mean, yeah, it would be in its common sense, yeah. Right. It's against the law. I can't, I can't use my office... To tell people to vote for me. That's uh, no. That's what a campaign's for. It's common sense. That's why the two worlds, like George on Seinfeld, you know, you got to keep them exactly separate. That's but that's duh. You know, common sense. So anyway, I'm going to try to solve this, frankly, Andrew, today on the internet, and if I'm able to do so, and I think we can. I've got a good shot at this because of all the emails. Because last night, as you know, I twittered this. And yeah. Was a huge response. I, I, yeah, I was going to ask about that. Um, you've you've gotten really a lot of support across the whole com internet community from Republicans and Democrats. Libertarians. Libertarians, everyone. Right. I, I don't think I've, I've seen a single post a against you. Um, and, he, and speaking of Twitter, wh what's, what's the problem there? Why do you think, that, or what, what's the rationale behind thing or pre-approving a tool that allows you to directly communicate with your constituents. I mean, I, I sent you a message last night saying, hey, mm -hmm. do you want to talk about this? And you, you replied, normally to contact your congressman. And I mean, I don't know if every all 435 of you have the stamina for this, but it's got to go through all you know, the LCs and all these. This, let, this gives a direct channel. Why, why would anyone have a problem with that? 
Uh, beats me. I love it. This is my goal is to become a real time representative, Andrew, and as a congress. As you said, a thief can't steal your money in the daylight. I mean, that's why they put street lights up. The time that they're going to get their hand in the pocket and take your money is in the dead of night. It's a good thing to shine sunlight in all the corners of Congress because there's a lot of people up here that want to get their hand in your pocket and take your money, uh, taxes or whatever. So it's, to me, a sunshine project, uh, Andrew. Uh, it's also a matter of truly my, my hero here, Thomas Jefferson. This is something he would have loved. Uh, I'm a very serious student of uh, Mr. Jefferson. I subscribe to the Princeton series. I've read about half of his writings. Right. I'm very, very passionate about Jeffersonian republicanism, and so this is a matter of principle to me. And Twitter to me is a way of communicating directly in real time with my constituents, with other people. It's a way to engage in friendly, informative debate with people who may or may not agree with you. And uh, frankly, this is a rule that the Democrats are trying. I'm going to keep this nonpartisan. This rule that the House leadership is attempting to pass uh, is going to fail. There's no way that they can regulate the Internet or stop us with our constituents. I'm going to continue to use Twitter. I'm right. going to continue to aggressively use every form of social media to communicate. And what are they going to do about it? I mean, how are they going to stop me? They're not going to stop me. Well, I, w I was going to ask you, I mean, you're, you're an attorney. First Amendment, why don't you have a First Amendment right to communicate Absolutely. with your constituents and, th and them to communicate with you? Absolutely. Within the bounds of sense and obvious prohibitions in the law, for example, using official resources for to camp. promote my campaign, to either promote myself, uh, to help. Obviously, I can't use official resources to enrich myself. You know, This is not a job that I'm ever going to get rich at. That's not the reason we're here. It's public service. So with those obvious exceptions, I'm going to use the uh, official resources to communicate with my district. I'm combining video, for example, Andrew, with a telephone town hall meeting. I have software technology that can dial 70,000, 100,000 homes in my district, and they can talk to me in a big conference call, one at a time, of course, but everybody can listen. And the other night, and I'm going to start doing this regularly, I combined the video with the, uh, the town hall the on, on town the stream, hall. right? That's right. So people were able to text me questions, ask me questions on the telephone, watch me live on the video, and, of course, listen at the same time on the phone. So this is allowing us to really shine sunlight into the government, and we, the people, can see and hear and communicate with our elected officials in a way that's never been before. And to me, it's tremendously exciting and a lot of fun. Do you think that this is a, an attempt? I mean, uh, Leader Boehner was saying this is you know censorship, censorship. Do you think this is a blatant, you know, Partisan attempt to censorship, or do you think it's just a misunderstanding? I, I don't know that it's. I don't know that. I have to say I don't think it's partisan. I have to give them the benefit of the doubt. I think that it is a. Uh, it may be driven by probably uh, fear, uh, ignorance. I don't think they have to do with the internet. Nobody in Congress. I'm the first one on Twitter and to use this technology. Uh, Tim, uh, Tim Ryan has been using it a little bit from Ohio. Yep. Uh, some other people are using it. I think staff is just exactly using the Twitters. So I'm the first one to really do it personally, and I just they don't know what to do with it. They just this is, you know, I asked a question the other day. I had to contact them. when I called. I asked them, uh, how do we handle these video town hall meetings? I mean, and they were like, nobody's ever asked us that question before. I mean, how do I handle Twitter? They were like, nobody's ever asked this. I am confident that what I'm doing is a is a trigger that has helped the questions of House Franking. Let me tell you what I'm doing, and uh, I want to make sure that this doesn't violate any rules. And they're like, nobody's ever asked us these questions before. So you've been asking. You've been proactive. That's what led to this letter, I'm confident, is that the questions I've been asking, the posts I've been putting on the Internet, I'm getting on Twitter, the quick posts that I did. The other day, I, for example, videoed the Appropriations Committee chairman just shut down the hearings. I remember that. And I posted those on the Internet. I've told them, I've made it clear that I'm, I'm moving to the point where I'm going to go into a rules committee meeting that's that's a, a public hearing where they pulled all the television cameras out, and I'm going to take the camera in with that red light and start videoing. Right. It's public hearings that they don't want the public to see. They're aware of that. And so I, you know, I'm sure there's other things, but I'm, I know that I've been a trigger for this rule change, and I'm going to try to talk them off the ledge. Now, the, uh, the commercial... The commercial aspect of it, 